So when I say failure is not an option, that doesn't mean you go down the wrong road if you're following a bad business strategy. I've, I've always talked about how you need to assess and maybe regroup and go take a different route. Well, hi, this is uh, Mike Howard. Welcome to another edition of the Ronin Leadership Podcast. It is uh, Friday, the 6th of January, 2023, and hard to believe that we're in a, uh, a brand new year. I uh, hope all of you had a great holiday season and hope none of you got stuck with uh, all that, uh, the travel debacle from South uh, Southwest Airlines, uh, which could actually be the uh, subject of a, another podcast on uh, lack of leadership, but uh, that's for another day. But anyway, hope all of you had a really great uh, holiday season and uh, wishing all of you a wonderful uh, 2023. Uh, Janice and I had a really great uh, and very uh, jam-packed uh, uh, holiday season, a lot of seeing a lot of friends and doing stuff with family. And so it was really great, but uh, good to have a new year and see what this new year brings. And uh, also thanks all of you for uh, spreading the word about this, uh, this podcast. We're getting more and more subscribers. Uh, if you are new to this podcast and you like what you see, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button that you see on the screen. Um, and also, uh, I have uh, two books out. The Art of Ronin Leadership, which was my first book, which really goes into my journey uh, of leadership and um, mistakes I made and hopefully some successes and lessons I've learned that have uh, Hopefully it makes me a, a better leader and just gives you an idea of what I consider to be great leadership, sort of the tenets of great leadership. The second book, uh, which is an Amazon bestseller, uh, is The Art of Executing Ronin Leadership Strategies. And that's more of a how-to book uh, on leadership, how to get things done, basically, how to get uh, a team established, how to uh, develop business strategies and how to execute on them and continuous improvement and all that stuff that uh, helps you uh, achieve your business goals um, and drive continued success. So uh, you can get those at amazon.com and also at mikehowardauthor.com. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today? Well, you see my t-shirt it says failure is not an option. Those of you that are movie buffs or if you're uh, space buffs, NASA buffs know that this was a famous quote um, that was um, uttered by a gentleman by the name of Gene Krantz, uh, portrayed by Ed Harris in the movie uh, Apollo 13. He was the flight controller, uh, and kind of in charge of flight operations, and uh, he uttered those words, failure is not an option, when uh, some of his team, they weren't sure whether they were going to be able to get the, the three astronauts back uh, on uh, to Earth after there had been an explosion on Apollo 13 and they had to abort the mission to land on the moon. And I thought I, this would be an apropos shirt to wear and a topic to talk about because uh, some of you who are my Facebook friends know I, I uh, had a experience recently that uh, during the holidays, which was which was awesome, um, it was a zero G experience. And uh, the Omega Watch Company, which Omega Watches, uh, Omega Supplies, uh, has been the one supplier of uh, watches for the NASA program, um, with the Apollo program and then space station and uh, and 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 beyond as they're planning on going to Mars. And so there's a great tie between NASA and Omega. And I was honored to be one of several people around the country to be able to be uh, sponsored by Omega to go to Florida. Uh, unfortunately, Janice couldn't make it on this particular trip. We had some family obligations, uh, but uh, she graciously let me go and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get her in another similar experience in the near future. But uh, I was able to go to Florida uh, to the Kennedy Space Center and experience this zero G experience where you are literally weightless and floating in there as if you're in space. Um, uh, in a nutshell, there were maybe two, four, eight, 
10 of us brought in by Omega from around the country. There was another group also uh, separate from us, uh, from the Explorers Club, which is a club, a global club, I guess. They, they do a lot of adventure type of things and, and uh, uh, go all to different parts of the world for different experiences. And so they, this was one of their experiences. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, you do it at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the night before the experience, they, they put us up at a, at, a, at a nice hotel, actually on the Disney property, uh, Disney World property, which is next door to uh, or near um, Kennedy Space Center. And one of the delights of that dinner was not only meeting the other people who are watch nerds like I am and just talking all things watches, but also uh, being able to have dinner with a, a guest there, Charlie Duke and his wife. Charlie uh, uh, was on Apollo 16, his youngest man to walk on the moon, youngest astronaut to walk on the moon. And um, he um, is in his 80s now, he was with his wife Dottie, and he was just a, a delightful, delightful man. Uh, wonderful to talk to, about as humble as you can be, given the fact that he had retired as an Air Force Brigadier General uh, obviously been a fighter pilot prior to um, and saw combat and then prior to getting into the Apollo space program. One of 12 people uh, in history to walk on the moon. So just a wonderful achievement. And just to see this gracious man in his 80s with his wife, shaking hands with everybody, answering our questions, taking pictures with us. Um, just. You know, as an aside, I remember going to a Bruno Mars concert with Janice a couple of years ago, and uh, because Bruno didn't want his picture taken uh, in his concerts, they take your cell phones away because I guess for some reason maybe he's too good to uh, to get his pictures uh, taken, whatever. And yet you've got this astronaut that walked on the moon; he takes as many pictures as, as you want, you know. And I'm sure he might get tired of it too, but I think part of him realizes that the you know, how sincere people are when they see someone like him and they admire what he's done in his life, right? Um, and they have, he and Dottie obviously have a very great marriage. And I think that's a great foundation uh, to become a great leader is that, not that you have to be married, but uh, there should be some foundation in family, some foundation in friendship uh, that keeps you grounded uh, as a leader, as you're working hard to <clears throat> build your business and build a team and drive success. So anyway, getting back to the experience, so the next day after the dinner, uh, you go to uh, you go to Kennedy uh, Space Center. It was cool just being on the property, seeing the mock-ups of missiles and, and spacecraft, um, and then passing by these huge hangars where these signs are saying, and this hangar is being built you know, X, Y, Z for whatever mission. And you could tell the, how huge these hangars were. And, and you can imagine uh, the technology and, and the manpower that's going into building uh, these, these uh, spaceships and, and uh, other things for the future. And then finally you get onto this runway <clears throat> off the beaten path. Find, we found out later that it's uh, one of the runways used in the past for the space shuttle program where the space shuttles would land. And, um, we were given a safety briefing earlier, and the idea was that we would be doing a series of what they call parabolas. You get on this plane, a 727, get up to a certain altitude, and then these parabolas would be basically maneuvers up and down, up and down, right? And the weightlessness would last 30 seconds. So, um, and you would experience this zero G effect. And they, they briefed us saying that when we were going to start doing this, the first couple of times they were going to go slow, not the full zero G experience, just enough to get you to experience, you know, uh, um, just being off the ground in a weightless environment. And then they would go to the full zero G experience. Charlie Duke came with us. Um, this is nothing for him, obviously, for someone who's been an, an astronaut, been in space, walked on the moon. But he wasn't too good to hang out with the group and just and he went up in, in the air with us to, for this experience, which was a delight that we were able to do this with him. And oh, by the way, I've, uh, we will we will try to get some 
pictures and maybe a video or two embedded into this podcast so you can get a sense of what the experience I, I went through was. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was really, it was quite a joy. Uh, anyway, they, they, you get onto the runway, there's a big 727 with a zero G logo on it. Get on the back. Um, there, if you split the, the plane up in thirds, the, the rear third is where you're sitting, uh, in seats. You have your flight suit on, you know, they've given you your flight suit earlier in the day. Uh, you have name tags. Uh, the good folks at Omega here in Las Vegas told them my name tag should be Ronin. So that was quite a surprise. I didn't realize that was going to happen. And then once the plane takes off, they split you up into two groups um, and they move you forward into the, the, the first two thirds of the plane and again into two groups. And then at the appointed time, and by the way, this plane has cameras all the way around so they can capture as you're floating around. They have at least two zero G personnel with handhelds floating around too, so that they can take pictures or videos of you because we all get our, they're all going to give us videos afterwards and stills. And they've got a couple of flight attendants and plenty of people there to make sure that you're not, uh, you're not going to hurt yourself. Everything's padded. So the chances of you, <clears throat> you know, bumping into anything and hit, hurt yourself is like slim to none. And then at the appointed time, they tell everybody to lie flat on the ground. And then, uh, as you do the first uh, parabola, they'll tell you right to push off just slightly, and all of a sudden, man, your body is just like right off the ground, right, just floating, and you're just kind of feeling it and just getting a sense of it. And then after 30 seconds, you're back on the ground, and they do a second iteration. And then finally, when you get about a third or fourth, then they say, okay, I'm going to do the full zero G experience. Don't push off so hard because if you do, you'll go bouncing off the ceiling. Again, you're not going to hurt yourself, but you want to have a good experience. And after a while, they do a couple of these things. You're starting to feel comfortable. You're flying around like Superman. Uh, you're able to twist into a ball and, and twirl. You're able to do one-arm push-ups. Uh, they threw the water around so that at some point you could catch the water in your mouth. People, uh, you know, The instructors are throwing their cell phones around so you can just grab them and see them floating around uh, and everybody's having a great time. Everybody's laughing and, and giddy. And it's just this beautiful, marvelous experience of being weightless and feeling and being in the same environment as you would be if you were in space. And it was just, it was just great. Uh, no one got sick, even though everyone was given a barf bag nobody got sick. Charlie Duke was there with us, right? Uh, he, this was nothing for him. Uh, but, you know, obviously he hadn't gone up in space, but um, he enjoyed the experience. You could tell he enjoyed how we were enjoying it. Uh, happy to take pictures with us on the plane um, after the experience was over. And we went through about 15 iterations of these. So we got a really good experience. Um, everybody was really giddy afterwards. And, and you know, after you, you finish the experience, you take a lot more pictures. And then you get off the plane and get back to the hotel. We had a final farewell dinner and Charlie had to go with the Explorers Club because uh, they have to divide his time uh, for dinner. But we were able to have Dottie with us, which was a real, real honor, his wife. Um, and so when I got back, I started thinking more about NASA, the space program. I uh, started rewatching, uh, rewatch, I should say, Apollo 13 because I just love that movie. Started reading the book Failure is Not an Option by Gene Krantz. And Gene Krantz, again, he, uh, the... Uh, uh, flight controller uh, for Apollo 13, and he wrote a book, Failure is Not an Option. Um, actually, got Janice uh, and, 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 and me one of these uh, these shirts from actually from Kennedy Space Center. And when I think about when I think about leadership, and I think about uh, ego, and I think about what's going on in the world, I look at these folks, these men and women of NASA, uh, who are true leaders who are probably some of the most humble people you ever want to meet, uh, who have pushed the limits of physical endurance and, 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 and uh, being able to maneuver in crisis situations, and yet they haven't allowed ego to take over them. You see the debacle going on in Congress right now, where the Republicans cannot figure out a way to get together to to have a, a, a speaker of the house right <clears throat> as their leader and there's you know it's no it's no uh, 
you know, it, it, it's no surprise that that chamber, Congress, politicians are full of just big egos, right? They want to hear themselves talk. They love being on TV. The complete antithesis of what we experienced in, in, in Kennedy Space Center or what you, when you, when you meet uh, someone like a Charlie Duke or you see these, these astronauts um, because they don't have to brag about their accomplishments. Uh, real leaders don't. Uh, you, 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 your, your, your body of work, uh, speaks for itself. And so some of the leadership lessons that you can glean from just an experience like this, and you don't have to go through this. If you have a chance to do it someday, I would highly recommend it. It's, 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 it's really great. It's fun. Um, but number one, the ability to stay grounded. Now that's no pun intended, right? Uh, but even in the air, um, at, at zero G, Someone like Charlie stayed grounded. Uh, he knew who he was. He enjoyed the experience. He enjoyed the people around him. He wanted to teach. And people would ask him questions about what it was like uh, when he was in, actually in space. And uh, he was willing to teach and give his knowledge. It wasn't about him. It was about you, right? And I've always said, uh, he's the epitome of, of selfless leadership. He and, and, and uh, many, if not most, if not all, of the folks in the space program. And that's, 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 that's a wonderful thing. Uh, the other thing is that the, uh, the ability to manage uh, a crisis situation and know that failure is not an option. And when you look at Apollo 13, you read about it. I'm reading Gene Kranz's book, Failure is Not an Option Now, I'm about halfway through. And... Uh, again, the idea of you have a group of individuals, let's say your team, but you have a group of individuals at NASA, you had an explosion on board an Apollo uh, 13 uh, flight. Uh, you're supposed to go to the moon and Gene Kranz takes the advice from his subject matter experts and say, we, we're not going to the moon. We have to get him home, right? Big decision, but he made it. Uh, taking the advice of those who he trusted on his team to give him the right decisions. Ultimately, he made uh, a lot of the hard decisions and failure was not an option and, and is not an option. And for you as leaders, failure shouldn't be an option. Um, you, you have to see situations through. Now, people would ask, well, what does that mean? What if you're in a, you're, it's a wrong business strategy um, and it fails. Okay, so when I say failure is not an option, that doesn't mean you go down the wrong road if you're following a bad business strategy. I've, I've always talked about how you need to assess and maybe regroup and go take a different route. Failure would only be if you keep going down that same route, right, and crash and burn. When you know that the only reason you're doing it is because your ego is tied to that particular business strategy, as opposed to knowing that you should be doing something else. Uh, Colin Powell had a great saying, what was it? Uh, Don't let your ego get so close to your position that when your position falls, um, your, uh, your ego goes with it, right? So just make sure that as you're following a business strategy, a business path, if you need to course correct, that's fine. That's not failure. You know, eventually it'll get you to where you want to go. When I say failure is not an option, it means don't go down a road that you shouldn't be going down to and, and you're not taking advice and counsel from those who may know more than you do. And so that was another lesson that uh, kind of gleaned from, uh, from, from this experience. But the other, I guess the last part of it was, I look at someone like Charlie and I see uh, this light in his eyes, right? I see this ability to continue to enjoy life and to keep going for it. And I think that's a great part of, of being a leader, uh, whether it's going for it in business and pushing the envelope and always trying to, to do more and improve and push yourself in areas that may be uncomfortable. I mean, I I've always been uh, a proponent and I've always admired those people who never wanted to rest on their laurels, who 
who were not satisfied with status quo, that always wanted to go higher and push harder and see what else they could do, right? Not just for ego gratification, but because it was for your self-improvement and for the improvement of your business, that's the way to go. Um, I never liked sustainer and it works for some people. And if it works for you, that's fine. I'm not saying that there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying my own DNA and the DNA of the people I worked with, that whether it was uh, police or CIA or certainly Microsoft, are you know people that want to push it. I want to see how far we can take it. It reminds me of these astronauts who definitely pushed it to the limit, uh, to the point where their lives were at risk for a greater good. And also they wanted to push themselves to see, did they quote, have the right stuff, right? That's another you know, uh, movie that you should see if you haven't seen it yet, about the early days of the space program. So that's what, those are the things that kind of really captured my attention as we, um, as I went through this, this journey, uh, you know, flying home, just kind of ruminating on how great the experience was itself from a visceral standpoint, but also the lessons learned and, and remembering that as I, um, as I get older and I'm not working anymore per se, I'm, I've got other pursuits, obviously, as you know, um, to always remember to learn to live life to the fullest. Uh, to continue to learn and to continue and always never get full of yourself and your ego to always remember that uh, to stay humble to give uh, knowledge that you have to others who ask it and seek it and and again if you want to see example of bad leadership in action just turn on the tv and turn on any news channel and listen to politicians and you know so-called leaders of our country and see them squacking their jaws and basically they just talking to hear themselves talk. You have a few that have good hearts and want to do the right thing, but you have a lot of them that uh, are just there for their self aggrandizement. Um, and I think in business, you, you, you run into people like that too. Um, and so if you stay grounded, if you stay humble, but if you stay thirsty to push, uh, the bounds of where you can go, you'll be surprised at how far you can go. Uh, my books uh, talk about my particular journey and there were times when I didn't think I was good enough. You know, I've talked about the imposter syndrome and whether or not I thought I was good enough to do, you know, this, that, and the other. And I found out I was, but I wouldn't have found out had I not taken that leap of faith, gone for it, and decided that, you know, I was going to I was going to do this, right? So that's all I have for you today. Uh, remember, failure is not an option. Um, again, we're going to try to put some, uh, uh, at least a video and some photos so you can get a sense of what my experience was. But if you take nothing away from this, exper uh, this podcast, just remember, as a leader, uh, and you're in charge of uh, teams, and projects, and programs, you may have a title and you have responsibility and authority and that's all that's all great stuff but just remember it's the people that are that working for you that are helping you uh, look good and achieving your goals and as long as you remember that um, you will you will stay grounded and you will stay humble and you'll be able to achieve everything you want to achieve in in your business life so that's all I have for, for now. Um, I'll do another podcast very soon. We're lining up some other guests. Um, and I think we have some great guests uh, recently. We just, when I talked to Dave McGowan, the uh, chief security officer over at uh, Kaiser Permanente in December, that'll be coming out soon. We got a lot of buzz on um, Assistant Chief Sasha Larkin, uh, who uh, is here with the uh, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. A lot of views on that. So. Thank you again. Remember, uh, hit the, the like button uh, if you like what you're hearing and hit the subscribe button. Certainly tell your, your friends, family, <clears throat> tell your enemies because they could probably learn something about leadership. Uh, and uh, please, oh, speaking of books, uh, I, am, I have completed a third book, but it's co completely different. It's an action novel. I've always wanted to write a thriller. So 
I've been spending the last few months writing this thriller. Um, it should be out hopefully this spring, so stay tuned. And I'll talk more about it as the podcast go forward. Uh, but again, it's another way of me trying to stretch myself uh, away from, I'll always, I'll always be here with the leadership stuff, but I wanted to do something different, so stay tuned. But uh, please look at uh, MikeHowardAuthor.com um, or uh, Amazon.com. You can get uh, your copies of uh, either in the e-reader or, or you know, in paperback on the art of ruling leadership and the art of executing Ronin leadership strategies. So hope you um, are having a, a great week and a great start to this uh, new year. And I'm looking forward to some great content uh, coming out. Uh, wonderful guests, and uh, we're, we've got a few things going on. We may do some non-leadership podcasts, just some fun stuff, and I am actually thinking about also doing maybe a live podcast where we can get the word out and you all can call in or you know write in and I can answer your questions or we can have a little little interface, and then we'll do it like kind of a cocktail hour, but Got a lot of stuff uh, sort of gelling in my head and we're gonna make this work. So with that, have a uh, wonderful weekend or whatever part of the week you're listening to this. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, Continue to practice great leadership and remember uh, to be selfless. That remember, it's not about you, it's about the people that are working for you. You're serving them. All right, we'll talk to you soon, bye.